Some people think we shouldn't have a death penalty, and I and it's rough because other people think, you know, if you murder somebody, they deserve a death penalty. Then other people think God makes that decision. I respect both of those. I got the solution. Here's what we should do. We won't kill anybody if they murder somebody, but every time there's a storm, they have to get on a roof with a lightning rod in their hand. <laughs> Come on, let's see what God thinks about you. <laughs> Some of y'all laughing and some of y'all going, that's a good idea right there. <laughs> I thought it was. Then I read about a guy, Roy Sullivan. Y'all can look this guy up. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records. He's been hit by lightning seven times. I'm not making this up. One man got hit by lightning seven times. Now, I don't know about you people, but if I've been, if I've been hit by lightning, I don't know. What do y'all think? Um, uh, one time. <laughs> I think when I saw a storm coming, I would run for cover. <laughs> I'd be shaking in my boots, my rubber boots. <laughs> Maybe you get it two or three times, it's not a big deal. Here's this wife, we need some toast. <laughs> Why don't you take a loaf of bread out in the yard? <laughs> you can't have a friend in the world. Hey Roy, how you doing? What's with a clown? I'll be seeing you. <laughs> my grandma likes that joke, she's 94 years old, man. Every week my grandma says something makes me laugh. Last week grandma told me she's putting money under her pillow at night. I'm like, why, Grandma? She goes, I'm trying to get some teeth back. <laughs> she says things that make sense but don't make sense. You ever see that with an old person? We live on a lake. Last 4th of July, Grandma goes, don't go boating on the 4th of July. I'm like, why not? She goes, stay out there in that boat and it breaks down. You're not getting phone service. You can't get help. And you shoot up a flare. Ha! <laughs> Do people help you? No, they stand on the shore and they go, that suck. <laughs> we were kids, my grandma would fight and wrestle with us. She'd roll around the floor. My grandma did not like to lose. She fought dirty too. You started getting the better of her, she would hit you up beside the head with that loose skin under her arm. Wait, wait. <laughs> it's like a numb jump. Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> she fought dirty. One time I got my grandma in a headlock. She took her teeth out and bit me on the butt. <laughs> My grandfather's 95. They've been married 73 years, man. He's a big old, yeah, give him a hand. They're wonderful. He's a, he's a grouch. Uh, my grandfather's a grouch. He's a grump. <laughs> he, he buys those little liquor bottles like you get on an airplane and hides them around the house. So when he wants a nip, he grabs it. Thinks grandma I don't know what she knows everything, you know. <laughs> but he, used, he's a, he, he cracks me up. My grandfather used to put baby powder in his underwear. Every morning he'd get up, he sprinkled baby powder in his underwear. He stopped doing that. He was at a party and he had gas. <laughs> He'd fart and a little white clown's hanging out behind him. One old lady's running around the room. Is there a baby in here? He needs his diaper chain. They spoil my daughter's rotten though, man. I got three beautiful daughters. Uh, everybody has a, a one, one, one child that's always in trouble. My house is Morgan. She's the youngest one. She's been getting in trouble since she was this big, since she was four years old. True story. Boy, my wife used to watch The Apprentice and some other te television show on TV, and, and Morgan would be playing in the living room floor, apparently listening to this show. So she goes to her daycare, four years old, teacher told her to do something she didn't want to do. Morgan told her, I'll fire you and flush you down the toilet. <laughs> You and the teacher is a little upset. Your parents are here about this. She writes out a report and puts it in her desk. I go to pick Morgan up. He says, Mr. Bullard, you got to see this report. So she's looking through the desk for like five minutes and cannot find it, right? So finally she tells me what Morgan has said. Do I'm embarrassed today if anybody, any parent would be. You don't talk to people like that. And we're driving home. I go, wonder what happened to her report. Morgan goes, I got rid of that thing. <laughs> Four years old, she snuck in the teacher's desk, stole the report, and threw it in the trash can. I was scared and proud at the same time. <laughs> uh, we never call our loved ones by their names. We give them nicknames like Baby and Kitten and Sunshine. I call my wife Booger, because I picked her. <laughs> Sugar Booger. She calls me Fart Blossom. <laughs> I love my booger though, man. She does some dumb stuff. She was traveling. I'm talking her on the phone. She's complaining about the hotel bill. I go, booger, baby, do the all-American thing. Take a few things. Get some towels, you know. She stole 20 wooden coat hangers with no hooks. <laughs> I go, all the stuff in a, a, a hotel, you've taken coat hangers that don't have a hook. 
She said, you can't buy these in a store. <laughs> she had me there. <laughs> She's accusing me of snoring. Anybody, anybody got a love on the snores? Boyfriend, girlfriend, husband? Uh-oh, uh is that gentleman there? He snores bad down here. Have you tried to stop his snoring? What did you do? You hit him? That, okay, put your hand over his nose. You do that long enough, that'll work, I think. You know? <laughs> Booger got me those breathe right things, the little adhesive strips. Anybody tried those? Huh? Yeah, they work too, buddy. I taped her ear shut. <laughs> some of you laughing, some of you going, that's a good idea right there. I do dumb things, ladies. Don't think I'm being mean to my booger, man. Last summer, I saw a snake in the yard. I got two daughters, three daughters. I saw a snake in the yard. I panicked. I ran into the garage. I got a shovel. I cut him in half. I didn't have cable for a week. <laughs> Here's a true story. When I travel, I always wear a shirt or a coat with a pocket in it. And I'll tell you why I do that. I put my cell phone in that pocket. So when my phone rings in a busy place like an airport, I know it's my phone. True story. This is four years ago, Miami, Florida airport. I call my booger up. I'm talking to my wife on my cell phone. Now, while we're talking, I look down and I see that pocket is empty. I've lost my cell phone. <laughs> My wife, realizing she is talking with an idiot, said, check your pants pocket. <laughs> this evil, evil, evil woman tried to talk me into going back to airport security to see if I left my cell phone there. Leave me on the line so I can hear what they say. <laughs> I was halfway back to security and saw myself in a mirror. <laughs> what else have I done? I went to a drive through zoo. You guys ever do that? You drive through in your car and the animals run loose around the car. I highly recommend it. A lot of fun. True story there. We're driving through the zoo called Safari Land and the zoo ranger pulls us over in his little Jeep. He jumps out. He's about to have a heart attack. Runs up to my car. My back window is cracked maybe two inches. He goes, you gotta roll that window up, you better roll that window up. A lion will get his paw in there and he'll rip that window right out of your car. I go, yeah, and I'll be dragging his butt 80 miles an hour across this zoo. <laughs> his little lion butt will be going ba doo ba doo ba doo. <laughs> if I was you, I'd get back in my Jeep. Here comes a lion. <laughs> I got a piece of junk car, I'll kill a lion now. Booger has a brand new car, ladies, 2020 Tucson. I got a 1999 Oseville, and people, it is a piece of junk. I mean, the driver's door is all knocked in on my car, right? My wife hates this car. I won't get rid of it, because I can have fun with it. Guys, you know what I'm talking about. You got a bad car, you can do anything you want because you don't worry about the car. Like those orange cones they put up and they work on the highway. You ever see them when they're all knocked down? Right here. <laughs> That's like a game. Wah, wah, wah. It'll go 20 yards. You hit one right, you can make the people working on the highway move. <laughs> Even the flag guy, he studied long and hard to get that job, didn't he? <laughs> they started him out on a one-way street. <laughs> Anybody here drive a piece of junk car besides me? Anybody? Here? Don't be embarrassed, it's fun. I make my neighbors mad. I park in front of their house. <laughs> I don't want to park in front of my house. <laughs> You know you got a bad car with a hitchhiker won't look you in the eye. <laughs> My muffler fell off. You guys ever seen that, a muffler dragging the highway? I got a coat hanger holding it up. A wooden coat hanger. <laughs> the other day, another guy with a bad car was admiring it. I'm in a Walmart parking lot. Guy goes, that's a good coat hanger you got there. I said, you can't buy those from the store. <laughs> Scary scene of my life happened in this car. Four years ago, I'm working in Detroit, Michigan, a comedy club called Chaplin's up there. Second night, midnight, I've gotten paid. I'm driving back to my hotel room. I'm at a stoplight, and a guy tried to carjack me in this piece of junk I drive. I don't even know where he came from. I look up, man in the window with a gun. Guy's going, get out of the car, get out of the car, get out of the car. I'm going, you gotta go around, that door don't open. <laughs> He walked in front of the car and I knocked the daylights out of him. <laughs> hey, y'all like a good practical joke? Yeah. Next time that a high wheel trouble and pulls you over, right? He gets out of his patrol car, he's walking up to your car. Right when he gets to the back of your car, you pull up eight or nine yards. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, they love that. <laughs> Do it three or four times. <laughs> They'll actually forget why they pulled you over. <laughs> you can get them far enough in their car, take off. <laughs> 
the line. Go to the laundromat. Take a baby doll with you. Put it in a spin dryer. <laughs> Walk around asking people, have you seen my baby? <laughs> I love a good frat to go to, man. Next time we go to the drive through window of the bank, when they send that tube out to you, fart in it and send it back in. <laughs> I did that, and a woman fell off her stool. <laughs> you know what I like? Everybody at that bank was looking at her. <laughs> it doesn't have to be your bank. <laughs> you can do five banks a day. Well, I'll do it Monday. Get it in the news. Bank farter. His probo. <laughs> My, I love a prank. My first prank to Joe was on my granddaddy. I was eight years old. My granddaddy, he loves to hunt. He can't hunt anymore. If he fires a rifle, he'll knock him down. <laughs> but uh, I was eight years old. I'm from my grandfather's house. He's cleaning his rifles. And I see him. He's looking at the barrel of a rifle. And I snuck up behind him with a paper bag. Bam! <laughs> and he beat my butt. <laughs> After he changed his pants. <laughs> my, my, my grandma's in there. How'd that baby powder get on the couch? 